There is a study on the tabernacle for, uh, of the Old Testament built by Moses at Sinai, carried by them through the wilderness, and uh, the, and it, we will focus on the uh, thanksgiving, praise, worship ministry, moving on to glory in a church worship time. Uh, so, uh, Exodus 25, 8, Moses said, Build me a sanctuary uh, according to the pattern I s show you on the mountain. So the sanctuary has the connotation of Kodesh, a holy place, consecrated for God's dwelling. So our thanks and praise and worship is consecrated for God to indwell. And <coughs> we know... Uh, uh, the Psalms tell us that God dwells in the praises of His people. So these praises are God-focused and by any chance we uh, try to get uh, honor or praise to ourselves uh, in praise and worship, we are completely mistaken and all thanksgiving for all uh, whatever happens in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, thanksgiving and praise and worship, adoration, uh, should be directed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Him alone be worship. Can we have the next slide? What you see in the next slide is the tabernacle. Uh, this is actually an actual uh, model in a, in a Swiss museum that, that is in photograph form. Uh, what you see in the uh, picture is the fence around the outer court and you see there the entrance at the eastern side eastern gate gate was on the eastern side or the entrance was on the eastern side immediately you remember genesis 3 22 when man was cast out of the garden of eden that the tree of life access was through the eastern gate but the eastern gate was shut so let me read the connotation about this eastern gate from Genesis 3, Genesis 3, 22, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. So we have done this before. Before he fell into sin, he thought of and knew to do all the good God had for him in his creation. So any fruit tree, sugar cane, the nucleus, the molecule, man had, man was designed, created for good intention, for good works. But when he sinned, he took to himself the knowledge to do evil beyond good, which is not what God had given him. By his disobedience, he earned that wrong right. Therefore, the Lord God went, uh, the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden. So he drove the man out at the east of the Garden of Eden. He stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turned every direction, turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. So I like to sh show it like this. The tree of life was just there in their vision or vicinity and the sword started turning around prohibiting entry. So this was a picture of the cross, the tree of life and the cross would provide the entrance. Uh, so in the tabernacle, on the, the entrance was on the eastern gate and that entrance was wider uh, than the height. So it was an invitation to come. Come unto me that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Whereas in the tabernacle proper inside, uh, the, it was limited access and only Levites and priests could go. Here it was uh, an invitation for all to come. And as you can see the colors, the colors were uh, white, of course it was linen thread woven curtains and all the colors were uh, white, blue, red and purple, white said God is holy, you can't get in, and blue said uh, deity, you can't get in, 
and purple said royalty you you ought to fear but red said it's my sacrifice it's my blood uh, without the remi- without the shedding of blood there's no remission for sin and it is the blood of the covenant that the tabernacle spoke about so the the curtain of the outer court the gate had this promise because of the blood that they could come in the the pillars of the gate were they stood on silver bases and with silver tops only at the gate silver bases and silver tops the base silver bases only at the gate and silver said come god is merciful but all around the outer court where the pillars were the pillars stood on brass or bronze bases and the top the chapter was silver so the brass base said there is judgment and uh, knowing therefore the terror of the lord we persuade men but the silver said come so the brass base said god judges sin wages of sin is death but the silver said uh, and uh, uh, romans 3:23 brass said all have fallen, fallen short of the glory of god uh, romans 6:23 also said wages of sin is death but the silver said but the gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus so those who are circumcised only can come so going through the gate and entering is a experience of being born again and you are received by the brazen altar of sacrifice where there was shedding of shedding the blood of animals and the outer court between the pillars had hanging the white linen cloth they also proclaim god's holiness and uh, every pillar at the top the silver tops were connected with a silver fillet or a rod so they stood upright so while the base showed bronze the on the top it was very visible silver said come that was the typology of the tabernacle metals and then as you enter through the gate you come to the altar of burnt offering and it is entirely bronze saying judgment and uh, on calvary god judged our sins on jesus christ so we when we begin worship we enter his gates with thanksgiving in order to dwell in his courts with praise so the believer does that and uh, psalm 100 100 says that uh, so Uh, the worship team leads people in thanksgiving and in praise but there had to come a time not too late that people both the believer and the unbeliever in the congregation come to the brazen altar of sacrifice and sense the blood of jesus christ and go through a cleansing process and they begin to feel the call of the blood of jesus christ uh, feel the Uh, attraction the plea of blood come all that who come will be saved that uh, by the blood we are redeemed and the blood of Christ cleanseth us from all unrighteousness all this uh, and he is the lamb of god who was slain from the foundation of the world it's no more the blood of goats and animals so the worship leader and the worship team have to plan the time of uh, in entry through the blood or uh, a song of a song that takes you through repentance be- before getting into uh, before too late so we need to check uh, how much of thanksgiving and praise would believers do uh, while uh, those who don't know at all repentance have come for the first time how will they connect with thanksgiving and praise and the vibrancy of praise which is fine but you have to be mindful of the one who has just come for the first time so my suggestion is even during thanksgiving praise time if there is a slowly reflecting meditating uh, entry of blood even at the very beginning uh, even at the very beginning if you play a, a, a a uh, slow melody like uh, a single drop of blood or i enter the holy of holies 
Then the worship team also goes through the blood at the very beginning, a washing, a cleansing, a drawing of hearts. And a sinner or one who has come to for the first time also can feel the draw of the Savior. Uh, then in the tabernacle, uh, at, the, at the altar of burnt sacrifice, there were, all utensils are bronze, showing a judgment. And we know on the cross, Jesus Christ to cover judgment. He, he was uh, wounded for our transgressions. Our iniquity was laid upon him. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we will not be charged for our sin. So the altar of burnt offering was Calvary, and there was fire. There was a morning sacrifice and an evening sacrifice. Each one coming in, so when the tabernacle was on, people could bring the sacrifice, a lamb or a goat, or a turtle dove for the poor, but uh, always there was a morning and evening sacrifice anyway. And uh, fire was never meant to go out on the altar. Just behind the brazen altar was the labor of water, which was also bronze, and that's where the inward parts of the sacrifice animal will be washed before putting on the uh, altar. And that's also where the priest washed uh, before putting on their linen cloth and entering the holy place. So we know the labor of water is the word of God. And uh, uh, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 5, we, we are told by the washing of the water of the word. So the water of labor would refer to the word. And in 1 John 5, uh, 7, we know, uh, 6 and 7, there are three witnesses on earth, the blood, the water of the word, and the spirit. Now if we uh, uh, go to the next, uh, foot, next slide, please. Next slide. This is the entrance gate at a closer view, uh, where they are trying to take an animal, and the Levites are serving and so on. The brazen altar is there, and uh, next slide. And you will see the entrance to the holy place just beyond the labor of water. The entrance to the holy place was narrower and higher, and there the pillars stood on golden uh, silver bases, and they were gold topped. So gold referred to faith, pure faith, uh, uh, faith tried in the fire. Can we have the next slide? This is the inside of the holy place. You will see that uh, uh, right in front is the laver of water, laver of, uh, beg your pardon, golden altar of incense. On the left hand side is the uh, golden lampstand beaten out of one uh, plate of gold. And on the right side was the table of showbread. So all this, every item is a typology or the antitype, fulfillment is in the New Testament, of the believer's life in Christ, of the Savior's life, and of the church itself. So everything in the tabernacle had a threefold message, what Christ is and what he did for us. And John 1.14 uses the language of tabernacle. He was tabernacle amongst men, among men, full of grace and full of truth. So the word tabernacled is there. Jesus was God's tabernacle on earth for those 33 years. And the wilderness story depicted this tabernacle. And in the holy place, only priests could and the Levites could go to the holy place. So it's a calling in the, but in the New Testament we are all called to be royal priests, but we are all called but few may be chosen. So what chooses us is our own choices. They choose us. That is why in our church we always had a Saturday Bible study. And the, besides the Sunday service, because we, we knew our genome is to be called to a priesthood and to be servants and ministers of God. So this is the holy place. And in it, uh, on the left hand side is the showbread table. It's bread of your presence. And there were 12 loaves signifying each tribe. 
and uh, the loaves of bread were without yeast and they were uh, sprinkled with frankincense to uh, depict God's presence. And uh, uh, the priest could eat the bread once a week and it would be changed once a week. And when David and his uh, team got hungry, the priest uh, gave them the uh, bread meant only for priests to eat. Then right in front as you enter and opposite the uh, veil between the holy place and the most holy place was the golden altar of incense where incense would be offered and all the equipment there would be made out of uh, gold. And when Aaron's censer was all gold and holy incense particularly made for the tabernacle was used for the incense and we know our life is meant to be a sweet incense offering and our life should show forth the uh, smell aroma of life 2 Corinthians 2 14 15 says who is equal to equal to this task Paul says because our life would be a smell aroma of life for those who are being saved and an aroma of death to those who reject so we are almost like the brink the watershed mark for those who accept Christ and those who do not accept Christ so our life is the gospel our life is the new covenant and the aroma out of our life, our expressions, our witness, our talk, everything about us uh, need to speak of the fragrance of Christ attracting people to Christ. Uh, today also I went out and gave some booklets and spoke to some people. As I went to the nearby supermarket, a doctor, uh, doctor's t uh, label, was a vehicle drove in with the doctor's label, it was drizzling slightly, I got out and sp went to speak to the person and that happened to be a doctor's vehicle and who came was a medical student, the son. And he was very friendly. So I got two in one. The father, I said, please give uh, this to your father. And I spoke to him also. He very graciously gave the WhatsApp numbers of both father and son. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Because I prayed and it's, at that time I went and, and I told Southern who drove me and Southern encouraged me and said, Uncle will get down though it is raining. I got down and this vehicle just came as we went in and the vehicle came. So it's obviously a God instance, a God happenstance. If you also now say, where should I go? And the Lord will tell where. And as you go, you will find the man of peace whom, he, he, whom the Lord intends you to meet today. It's only a matter of by faith in obedience, go do. So that's the sweet incense altar. You will remember the incidents when Korah, Dathan and Abiram rebelled against the authority of Moses and Aaron uh, that uh, people started dying and Aaron had to run between the living and the dead with uh, incense and live coal and his golden censer running between the living and the dead. And then uh, the last item that is on the left side, actually it would be the, it would be the north, it, 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 the east, the west, uh, it would be the south side, the uh, golden lampstand. Can we go to the next slide? Golden lampstand. Next slide. There is a golden stand, lampstand, it's all of beaten gold. In one piece it is made and each branch looks as if it is branching from almond blossoms. So the central rod and each branch at the end of it carries a lamp which is also gold and this is the wick is clean with golden tongs every day and oil filled up every day, the special anointing oil. There is a special anointing oil that came on the head of Aaron according to Psalm 133. There is a special anointing oil with which priests were consecrated and this was a special anointing oil burning all the time in the holy place. This is, the, uh, this is our inner life, golden anointing oil burning in the holy place. This is the life of the church. Church has a constant 24-7 life of prayer, anointing before the Father. And what church does on Sunday comes out of a 24-7 presence, uh, anointing, holy incense and fragrance of the Father. Praise God. So the middle rod 
middle uh, rod is often associated with the call of the apostle. Then out of it branches the prophet, uh, the office of the prophet, office of pastor, office of teacher, office of evangelist, and the uh, other two I like to think of office of Barnabas, administrator, one who has money, knows how to handle money, and gives generously to church life. And we know our small church from a mud hut uh, has a property in Colombo and a campsite, all because God's people from the beginning gave so generously. And so Barnab I like to think there's an office of Barnabas who is an administrator and a giver of money to the church and then there is a God appointment. They understand that. And you know that Barnabas was a rich man, landed proprietor in Cyprus. He sold much he had and laid at the apostles' feet that all the church may benefit. Then the other branch I like to think of as a diaconia or deacon. And uh, those are very precious people who do small things out of sight all the time. So we appreciate them also. So that is the golden lamp stand. And uh, next one. And when these items are to be moved in the wilderness journey, next slide, uh, the priest would come and cover it with blue cloth. And then it would be the, it would be the, uh, it would be the, Kohathites. The Levites were three groups according to the sons of uh, Aaron, uh, sons of Levi, beg your pardon, uh, Kohath, Merari, Gersham. Uh, so uh, the Kohath, Kohathites are the ones who actually carried the, uh, the items itself. So this picture that you see is a lampstand relating to the seven mountains. So the apostle, the central one, is with governmental authority. He'll have to deal with local, the, the national government or whatever with governmental office. And then there would be, I, I normally put judges and, uh, in that group or in another mountain. Then let me see what else is there in this. Uh, there is religion on one side, business on the other side, another mountain for uh, business, trade, commerce, then there'll be a mountain for uh, education, professions and so on. There'll be a mountain for entertainment, music, telecommunication. There might be a mountain for uh, sports, so you understand various uh, activities of society governed by the office in the church. That's how you think. And in every societal mountain, that there would be Christians at the bottom, at the middle, and at the top also. That's how we want the Lord to prosper. We know that uh, uh, different industries in Sri Lanka, different corporates in Sri Lanka, do have Christian heads. Uh, so we can pray this for government, we can pray this for, uh, uh, for, for law and justice, we can pray this for uh, different different sectors of the governance portrayed here the societal mountains and the lampstand the middle one the apostle the prophet and the pastor uh, uh, teacher and obviously pastor's role in the family would be very precious then the teacher and the evangelist so the teacher by God's call and God's office account Ephesians 4 7 to 12 would obviously be a teacher in a school also or in a university uh, so each Christ office by Christ ascension as, uh, as uh, described in Ephesians 4 fits the church, uh, working in the church, serving in the church as well as serving in uh, outside society. Where God created the church and God created the world. So church is the holy nation in the world which goes through all kinds of troubles. Uh, then we enter through the veil between the holy place and the most holy place through the inner veil. The, only the high priest could enter there on the day of atonement, on the tenth day of the seventh month of Tishri in the Old Testament. He had to take blood for himself, Hebrews 9 says, and for the whole nation. Uh, so when Christ died on the cross, at the moment of his death when he said, It is finished. The temple veil between the holy place and the most holy 
dough from top to bottom and there was no more separation. A royal priesthood had been created. We all are the royal priesthood of God, uh, the holy nation. So in the most holy place, what you have, can we see the uh, Ark of the Covenant? This is the Ark of the Covenant. The box is of uh, timber, acacia, covered with gold. And inside it would be the two tablets of stone. In our case, and the law of God is written in our heart by the Holy Spirit. There would be uh, the rod of Aaron that budded during the Pura days and Raman uh, rebellion. And that Aaron, a dead almond stick, became a blossoming, blooming uh, almond stick, which is resurrection of Christ was prophesied. All those were inside the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Then there was the Book of Covenant written with all the sacrifices. It was also in the Ark of the Covenant. And then we had the pot of manna in a gold container. Uh, the, and we had also the golden censer of Aaron. And the Ark was covered by the mercy seat, which was of one gold uh, uh, molding and the cherubim you found in the Garden of Eden are still there watching all the glory of God and when the tabernacle was raised up glory of God came on the most holy place it was a, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night spreading all over the congregation of Israel wherever they were pitched tent and we believe this when we do our Sunday service, when we belong to God's family and God's community and we live in the glory of God, the same pillar of fire covers us in the night, same pillar of cloud goes everywhere we go during work and daytime and no principality and power can get to us, no curse can get to us because there is the glory of God covering us. And we learn the life of the secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91, and, uh, and His... Uh, and uh, the shadow of the Almighty will cover us. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is the life of the Most Holy. So in our worship sequence, thanksgiving, praise, praise we do, worship God and we do, then there has to be a moment of stillness, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. And then we move into glory. We move into glory. Say with me, we move into glory. We must provide in our worship sequence, 30 minutes or 35 minutes, a movement into glory. At that time, drum will have to stop, bass guitar will have to stop, and very sensitive keyboard music can go on, and we move into the glory of God. The worship leader and the instrumentalist at that time must, must be people who understand the glory of God. We don't do glory. Glory is God's curriculum. See His glory, see His glory, see His glory come down. That's all what we can do. And that's Kebot. And when uh, Solomon raised his temple, fire came upon the altar, and a glory cloud filled the temple, and the priests could not stand up. How many priests? Guess the number. 120. And on the day of Pentecost, there were 120, and a mighty rushing wind, and a cloven tongue of fire on every head. That's the glory. Uh, so if every Sunday service we ought to be moving into glory uh, and we ought to provide another day. That's why we had Saturday evenings for glory. Then we, have, we now have night of hope Friday evening for glory. Yes, salvation, praise, thanksgiving, worship and then glory. That we practice the gifts of the Holy Spirit that every congregant must be able to lay hands. It is not a one-man show. Glory of God comes on all God's people are all priesthood. And the gifts of uh, Christ and the gifts of the Holy Spirit operate through all believers. If not, it's not a New Testament church. It's something else. Uh, so we are concerned for the glory of God and we want all God's people to know, to know Isaiah 6. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And glory, glory, glory. That's our song. So there's a time glory comes to the a Sunday worship service and under the glory without laying on of hands people get healed. Thank God for every word of knowledge people get healed. Thank God for laying on of hands it's a holy sacred altar 
we stop all broadcast at that time we do not do video at that time because at the altar laying on of hands is a holy sacred uh, uh, service and it's uh, it's god's time people must hear the voice of god musicians must go silent or only keyboards playing very slowly so that people who come for prayer they hear the voice of god they repent and you may lay hands of course we have a promise in mark 16 17 that every believer shall lay hand on the sick and the sick, sick shall recover demons will be cast out uh, all this is a promise for every believer but every believer must enter the call many are called all are called few are chosen that's the problem so we need more glory times in his presence practice his glory receive his anointing be every believer baptized in the holy spirit receiving gifts of the holy spirit understanding whether you are pastoral teaching or evangelist yes that's the way the church is edified we know from ephesians 4:13 then once you go into glory or when glory comes down then we know there's a time of high praise god begins to march and we begin to hear the sound of the marching feet of angels on the mulberry trees god has got an army marching through this land deliverance is their song healing in their hands everlasting joy gladness in their heart and in this army i've got a part so from thanksgiving praise worship stillness of glory high praise breaks out psalm 149 happens with a two edged sword in our mouth the uh, the praise becomes high praise demons are cast out uh, heaven, air becomes clean cleared up heavenly places are occupied by god and his angels and when there's a church worship like this the entire territory comes under the throne of christ and we become the footstool and when we used to do services in gunabala you have heard this before 100 meters away people fall under the power of god nobody laid hands nobody push they just fell under the power of god and people were brought in uh, for for the services to pray prayed for may this happen and when we started the healing house in colombo and we used to uh, sing and pray our auntie manju was always there purni used to play the piano a lady came with breast cancer while she was seated she got baptized in the holy spirit she did not know what the baptism was but holy spirit came she spoke in tongues she felt rolled off the chair later to find the cancer had disappeared glory to god this is the kind of healing is true but god gets the glory healing is true but healing is only an access to the gospel gospel is the power of god unto salvation so people must hear the gospel repent and believe turn to our lord jesus christ thank you holy spirit so we want to have in our sunday service worship and moving into glory high praise breaking out and moving into strongholds prison houses disarming people binding the enemy gates of hell shut up and gates of heaven open up in jesus name this is how sri lanka will change this is our ministry thank you for joining in this bible study maybe every saturday at 5 we can have a zoom bible study god bless you see you uh, on in church on sunday and those of you who are from other assemblies please go to your own church and we are not into shuffling shifting you be faithful in the house of god, house of god in which you were born again god bless you you are born again to belong again god bless you